Don't touch Listen. me, bro. Don't touch my car. President Trump has been trying to rewrite the timeline on his coronavirus response. I think our whole group has been spectacular. So here are the facts. In 2014, the Obama-Biden administration put together the Global Health Security Unit within the White House National Security Council. We have to put in place an infrastructure, not just here at home, but globally, that allows us to see it quickly, isolate it quickly, respond to it quickly. They also assembled a 69-page pandemic response playbook. Now, in 2018, President Trump fired the Global Health Security Unit. I'm a business person. I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. He also declined to renew CDC epidemic prevention funding, causing it to downsize in 39 countries, including China. Now, reporting from ABC suggests that intelligence officials were warning about this new disease emerging from China as early as November 2019. Nobody would have ever thought a thing like this could have happened. The administration has disputed that, but we know that at least as early as January 3rd, the White House National Security Council was briefed. In January, before Germany had a single case of the coronavirus, they began working on a test. January 8th, the CDC issued its first warning. On January 9th, the World Health Organization issued its first warning. And that night, President Trump held a rally. And America's future has never, ever looked brighter. On January 10th, the World Health Organization issued a comprehensive package of technical guidance with advice to all countries for how to detect, test, and manage potential cases. January 18th. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar tried to have an urgent phone call with the president about the crisis. The president reportedly cut him off to berate him about his efforts to ban flavored vaping products. President Trump then hung up and went golfing. January 19th, President Trump went golfing again. January 20th, this was the first confirmed case of the coronavirus in the U.S. It was also the first confirmed case of the coronavirus in South Korea. The response of the two countries could not be more different. Within the first two weeks of that case, South Korea had implemented nationwide testing. Perhaps that's why, as of the beginning of May 2020, South Korea has fewer than 250 deaths, while the United States has had over 65,000. Given the difference in population size, you would expect the U.S. to have a death rate six times that of South Korea. Instead, it is over 250 times that of South Korea. On January 22nd, asked whether he was worried, President Trump said, No, we're not at all, and uh, we're, we have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China, and we have it under control. It's uh, going to be just fine. On January 23rd, China shut down all of Wuhan. The World Health Organization held an international news conference, and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called for a public health emergency. President Trump did not declare it. On January 24th, President Trump tweeted, China has been working hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. It will all work out well. On January 27th, Joe Biden wrote an op-ed warning that President Trump was failing to take this crisis seriously and needed to take more immediate action. On January 28th, Elizabeth Warren released her coronavirus plan. That night, President Trump held another rally. On January 29th, President Trump's trade advisor, Peter Navarro, sent a urgent White House memo warning of the risk of the virus. Only then, was a task force formed. January 30th, China locked down all of Hubei province. The World Health Organization declared a global health emergency. That night, President Trump held a rally. February 1st, Trump goes golfing. February 2nd, only then did a partial travel restriction on China go into effect. Oh, we pretty much shut it down, coming in from China. 39 countries had travel restrictions on China earlier or at the same time, and many had much more comprehensive restrictions. At least 430,000 people arrived in the U.S. from China since January 1st. This included nearly 40,000 in the two months after President Trump's travel restrictions. While he claims that they saved thousands of lives, Dr. Jennifer Nuzzo, an epidemiologist at Johns Hopkins, says, quote, We have not seen any evidence that shows that the travel restrictions stopped or slowed down transmission of the virus. 
February 3rd, the World Health Organization released a Strategic Preparedness and Response Plan. February 5th, Secretary Azar requested $4 billion to fight the virus. This led to a shouting match in the White House. February 6th, the World Health Organization began distributing a quarter million tests around the world. The U.S. didn't want any. We'd produce our own. Around that time, the CDC produced a total of 90 tests, which turned out to be faulty. February 10th, President Trump proposed a budget that would cut CDC funding by 16%. That day, he said, the virus. They're working hard. Looks like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. I hope that's true. February 15th, President Trump went golfing. February 19th, he held another rally. February 20th, he held another rally. February 23rd, Peter Navarro sounded another alarm within the White House, warning of the increasing probability of a full-blown COVID-19 pandemic. Only the next day does President Trump finally ask Congress for additional funding. But that same day, he tweeted, the coronavirus is very much under control in the USA. Stock market starting to look very good to me. On February 26th, You treat this like a flu. Because of all we've done, the risk to the American people remains very low. We think that in almost all cases, they're the better we're getting, we have a total of 15. There were more than 15 cases that day. There were 60. And now there are 1.1 million. February 27th. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. February 28th. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. And this is their new hoax. The very next day was the first confirmed U.S. death. Washington state declared a state of emergency. March 4th, he did an interview with Fox News where he suggested that it might be okay to go to work with the coronavirus. You know, we have thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that get better just by, you know, sitting around and even going to work. Some of them go to work, but they get better. March 5th, California and Maryland declared states of emergency. March 6th, Kentucky and Utah declared states of emergency. He went to visit the CDC wearing a campaign hat and said, Anybody right now and yesterday, anybody that needs a test gets a test. We, they're there. They have the test. It wasn't true then. In May, it's still not true. March 7th, New York declares a state of emergency and President Trump goes golfing. March 8th, he golfed again. March 9th, he compared coronavirus to the flu in a tweet and suggested it would go away on its own. March 10th. It will go away, just stay calm, it will go away. On March 11th, the World Health Organization said it was not just a global health emergency, it was a pandemic. WHO has been assessing this outbreak around the clock and we're deeply concerned both by the alarming levels of spread and severity and by the alarming levels of inaction. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Only on March 13th does President Trump finally declare a national emergency. On March 16th, in a call with governors, he tells them, Respirators, ventilators, all of the equipment, try getting it yourself. On March 17th, he finally admitted, this is a pandemic. And he told reporters, I've always known this is a this is a real, this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. This is only days after he was still comparing it to the flu. On March 26th, President Trump delivered on his America First promise in a way no one could have wanted, as the U.S. overtook the entire rest of the world in cases of coronavirus. As of the beginning of May, the U.S. has 1.1 million cases of the coronavirus and has suffered over 65,000 deaths. Analysis of data from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation suggests that 90% of the U.S. deaths could have been prevented if the president had issued physical distancing guidelines even two weeks earlier, when he had already been warned of the threat for months. With all of that, it's been an incredible period of time. We've done a fantastic job. I've been trying to leave, and I got super neighborhood, the super neighbor over here blocking me in. 
This is what I'm dealing with right now. This is who I'm dealing with. Napoleon, move out the way. My name's David Stewart. I don't care what your name is, get out the way. I don't care, move, move out the way, sir. Please hurry up so you can have this a-hole move out the way so I can leave. I asked you one question. I, no, it's none of your business, and I asked you. It is not. No, no, it is my business. Mm-hmm. Why? You get the mayor of the, of the cul-de-sac? Yeah, I'm president of the association. Okay. These are private streets. And apparently you need a gate code to get in here, right? Yeah, that's correct. So how did I get in here? I don't know where you're going. It was none of your business. I'm going out. That's where I'm going, but you're in my I'm way. I'm not with you anymore. So then move out the way then. Tom, it's a bad day. I got the president of the homeowners association over here at this last stop. Got me blocked in so I can't leave. And he called the cops because he wants to know where I'm going and I didn't want to tell him. I, I don't have the mental capacity to deal with this right now. I'm trying to leave. What do you mean, why? None your business? Uh, did I deliver it to your house? Because it's none of your business, that's why. You're asking questions, you don't need to ask questions. All you need to do is have your buddy move his car so I can leave and go about my business. How do I make a wrong turn into a gated neighborhood? I need to have a gate code in order to get in, right? That's common sense, right? So if I had a gate, if I'm in here, I had a gate code, right? That's none of your business. Yet again, it sure as hell is it. I'm not in the wrong. I don't know who this is. Uh, what's your name? Uh huh. I'm in the wrong. Show me your badge then. Uh huh. I don't give a f what you got. You do realize this is all private property. You do realize this is unlawful detainment, right? You have absolutely no reason and no right to hold me here to block me in with your car. You don't need to know anything. Yes, I do. This is private. Okay, that's fine. The private property that you own is probably somewhere up there. No, the private property I own, I own 118th of what you're sitting on. This street is private. 118th of what this I'm sitting on. City property. This street is maintained by the people that live in there. Mm -hmm. This is private. And apparently one of the people that live here ha it gave me a gate code. You're not helping me. You're being nosy. That's all you're doing. You're trying to use privilege and you're not getting it from me. You can apologize too. Uh, it wasn't your fault, sir. I, I don't understand what his need or purpose was for doing that. Um, normally, I probably could have handled it a little different, a little better, but emotionally, I got a lot of things going on. So I never left my seat, never left the truck, never took my seatbelt off. I'm finally out of here. I'm about to start driving seriously now. Thank y'all for being there for me. Um, I catch y'all on the flip side. You can't touch Listen. me, bro. Don't touch my car. What you doing out here, man? What's up? I work a group beat and I'm on work today. They off work today? They just wrap it, wrap it in the park. common process in almost every one of these cases. You have a victim shot dead in the streets and give it a few days and suddenly you start seeing images of that victim 
um, be, you know, cast in the light as a, as a criminal. Yeah, give me a second, man. Nobody's not even driving the car. What the f did you come over for? Come over for the f in the car. Well, am I fing with you? You wanna know I'm fucking with you? Why? Keep your hand in your pocket. I ain't got shit on me. What the f you fing with me for? I'll tell you why I'm here, man. Why? I'll tell you why I'm here. Why? Because this area is known for drug activity. Drug? How the f I'm drug attack when I work at Blue Beach? Back up. Back up. The f you talking about? You want to back up? Hit me Send me another unit, unit please. Send me another unit. Shit. Oh, boy. Turn around, put your hands on the car. Wow. Turn around, put your hands on the car. Watch out, bro. Turn around, put your hands on the car. I'm checking you for weapons. Reason. I'm checking you for check weapons. Check you got a reason to touch me, bro. I'm not searching you. I'm checking you for weapons. All right, man? Listen, man. I'm not, about? I'm not here to ruin your day. I'm here to look for any kind of criminal activity. That's all criminal I'm doing. Criminal activity? I'm in a fucking park. I work. The f*** you talking about? I fucking work. Check my okay. damn history. Go to my job. Okay. She call my job right now. I go I don't to work. To call your job, man. Shit, fuck you talking about? Shit. Boy. Go on my, don't go on my hey, motherfucking car. I'm bro. not going to your car. Don't Back up. Bro, don't touch me, bro. You can't touch Listen. me, bro. Don't touch my car and don't touch me. You're not allowing me to search your car? You can't go in my shit. I'm not asking I'm you. I'm Just don't you reach the car, man. Get your hand out of your pocket. Hands out of your pocket. Hands out of your pocket. Down. Warning, down. Stay on the ground. Just stay on the ground, okay? And I'm just here to make sure everything's okay. I don't know you. You don't know me, all right? I'm in the park trying to ease my mind. I'm rapping. I'm rap, bro. I'm rap. I got you, man. But when you run up on me and you get really jump, jumpy, that's going to make me nervous, too. I my day. I got one day off a week. One day. Okay. One day off a week. I'm trying to chill on my day off, bro. I'm up I got early you. in the morning trying to chill. I see. I don't have anything. I'm just so aggravated because I work hard six days a week. I'm aggravated, bro. No, I got you. My wife not here. I'm chilling. I'm trying to ease my mind, bro. I chill. Route. I get that. So you don't have anything in the car? Because I looked in the driver. I looked in the pass. I looked in the middle of your car in the center console. I saw I saw some kind of plastic in there. If it's weed, I don't care. So with that, with that being said, you mind if I just look in your car really quick? Would you be okay with that? You can say no if you if you don't want us to check your car. Okay. For whatever reason. Uh, whoever's releasing this information, that, that's where they want the focus of the media to be. We're not going to play that game. We're going to keep the focus where it, uh, where it belongs, on the men, William Bryan, uh, Gregory McMichael, and Travis McMichael, who chased, stalked, and murdered Ahmaud Arbery. It was an incident in the park where he did not, uh, where he was honestly brutalized by law enforcement. The reason that Ahmaud Arbery was criminalized on February 23rd was the same reason he was cr criminalized uh, in that encounter. He was literally sitting still in a park and a police officer said, you know what, this looks strange. Uh, and and the, the responding officer said, you know what, he, he appears agitated that, that, that we're interacting with him. Uh, why don't we use force unjustifiably? Said that they'd been stopped. He said, I'm working. I get one day off. Um, look at all the videos that we all look at every day where the person is white or Hispanic, or whatever, and they're freaking out because they can't buy something at the grocery store and they're going bananas. And it's just a common occurrence. I mean, he followed all of their instructions. It was a cordial conversation and they let him go. This isn't an issue. What is an issue, which people aren't focusing on, is 
Gregory McMichael is a former police officer and a former investigator for the DA. He knows the laws or should know the laws like the back of his hand, properly trained. But yet he pursued Ahmad and pointed a gun at him and, and ended up participating in his death. I didn't know in advance what my dad was going to say. I didn't know how much he was going to share. This is my first gay wedding, by the way. And for many of you, this might be your first gay wedding to attend. Back in 1997, I was one of the luckiest father around. My son was valedictorian, spelling bee champion, beauty plan two, playing the great job as a Romeo, and he actually fooled me because he actually did a good job as a Romeo and Juliet. Everybody else had a girlfriend here and a girlfriend there and this and that, and I said, Parag is such a pure guy. Man, I am so lucky. On 27th March at 4.25 p.m. on that Friday night, Parag had a very small speech. Dad and mom, I am gay. I have known it since I was 10 years old. I thought I was confused, but I'm beginning to realize that I am gay. I thought I will hide my being gay until you die, so you won't be embarrassed. I tried to commit suicide while I was in the high school, but I did not succeed. Thank God for that. But last week I was discussing in the class and there was another Indian girl and I blurted out, I am gay. So I knew the news will come to you sooner or later. Therefore, I'm telling you I'm gay. The whole thing was like three minute speech. From the best of the time, our life went to the worst of the time. And I was a very homophobic person. There's no question about it. So I thought there is no big deal. I'll fix him. I'll find the best treatment center in the country. I'll find the cure for it and I'll handle it. Monday morning, I was the first person to enter the medical library. And I pulled out all the cumulus medicus. And then I suddenly realized in 30 minutes that American Psychological Association back in 1973 had declared that gay people is not a disease. It is not a defect. It is not to be cured. It is not contagious. And if you accept somebody is gay, your child is not likely to be more gay than otherwise. I asked a simple question. Do I love my son any less at 431 than I loved him at 424? And a long pause, and the answer was no, I still love him the same. <clears throat> so then I wrote a letter. And when I wrote a letter, this is what I did. I said, who will be the 50 people who have played the important role in Parag's life? Some of them were very conservative and I knew that they will freak out when they heard it. So I kind of thought, okay, maybe 50% of the people would not talk to me. And my life would really be isolated. What to do? Again, a few minutes later, the answer came very simple. I said, Vijay, if there are 50% of the people who don't want to talk to you, Maybe they don't need to be in your life. Why don't you stick with the other 50% who will be with you? I remember the day that I met Vebhav, although I don't remember it the way he does because I was dancing in the Pride Parade. It wasn't until a couple of days later when I got a poke on Facebook who pokes on Facebook. And I think there was a moment that we shared where he came and danced with me. And it was just, I was mesmerized. I was like, I, who is this guy? I need to find out who he is. Jainism is a very ancient religion from India. Uh, the roots of it are about 3,000 years old. It revolves around two main tenets. It's uh, non-violence 
and truth. Jain weddings or Hindu weddings are similar, but not as similar. Like some of the rituals are different. It had never occurred to us that a same-sex couple could have the same kind of weddings that his brother or so many of my cousins had had. There was no template when we started this, but we wanted to create a template that others could use. And so we certainly asked a lot of advice from other gay couples who are South Asian and had, had elements of this in their weddings. But we also wanted to invent some of our own. He basically sat down with us and he went through the entire script, the regular scripts that he follows. And I basically suggested gender neutral rituals that we could do. Also the idea of having two Bharat. So Bharat is when the groom enters, usually like in a car or a, on a horse or in India on an elephant. And we came in on two horse carriages. Hopefully people will look at that and say, oh, that's how you do it. That's how that can be done. You can have two dole players, which are the drummers. You can have a DJ set up speakers on both sides. One of the best things that came out of our wedding was the amount of outpouring of love that we received from people around the world. Two brown men getting married, you know, what did you do, how did you do it, can you help me also, can you help me come out to my family, what do I do, how do I find that life partner. Our stories matter and that when we lead with love, I think the end decision is always the right one. And that was true for my dad, and that is certainly true for the two of us. I love you. I love you too. Oh, baby, what's this, Michigan and what? Michigan and what, Ace? I'm gonna park this motherfucker at Ace on 62nd in Michigan. Somebody come get my stupid ass. Please come get me. Please come get me. Please go get me, I'm on 62nd in Michigan. Can I just park this motherfucker and go? Please come get me. Guess he decided for whatever reason he wanted to do it high speed. Yeah. But he didn't think that he they got was out kill him. He didn't think, you know, he's 21 and young, he look dumb. So he don't always think before he do certain things. They could have tased my brother, beat him up. He could have been behind bars. But now I got to look at him. He's going to be in the casket the next time I see him. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're here for peace. That's it. That's it. So can we get a moment of silence for that young man that was murdered tonight? That's why y'all here. Y'all didn't come here to see me. Y'all came here to pay respect for that man that lost his life tonight. 
So let's pray we all make it home safe. I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Would you please stop? Sir, I'm asking you to stop. Please don't come close to me. Sir, I'm asking you to stop recording me. Please don't come close to me. Please take your phone off. Please don't come close to me. And I'm taking a picture and calling the cops. Please, please call the cops. Please call the cops. I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African American man, I am in Central Park, he is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. And my. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. If the habitat is destroyed, we won't be able to go there to see birds, to enjoy the plantings. I'm not going to participate in my own dehumanization. I'm not going to feed into this. You know, we, li we live in an age of Ahmed Arbery where, you know, black men are shot, gunned down because of the presumptions that people make about it. Unacceptable. You know, and words are just words, and I can't undo what I did, but I, I sincerely and humbly apologize to everyone, especially to that man, his, his family. I'm sorry, I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African American man. I am in Central Park. He is recording me, threatening myself and my dog. <laughs> and my. I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. All right, go ahead and touch that with your finger, that little puddle of water. Sure. What's the problem? All right, now lick it. Lick it? Yeah. Did you just, uh, hold on, hold on. See, I got to record this. Because if it was water, hold on, hold on, you wouldn't be on, doing it. You got to find somewhere else better to pee than this. Uh, no, like, I'm good, boss. You got your idea in here, my man? For what? Because there's no parking allowed here either especially urinating in public. That's not happening. All right, go ahead and touch that with your finger, that little puddle of water. Sure, what's the problem? All right, now lick it. Lick it? Yeah. Did you just, uh, hold on, hold on. See, I gotta pissed. record this. Because if it was water, hold on, hold on, you wouldn't on, be doing hold on, hold on. that. Record it, record it all you want. I just had an officer just walk up to me. Because me no one's gonna lick pee. No one's gonna lick pee. Who's I gonna lick dirt? Not you think because I'm black, I'm gonna sit here and touch some dirt and race. lick it? When I drive past and you're standing like this, and I can see the water. Yeah. When I'm I drove sitting past, here organizing stuff in my truck, I, I had to move stuff around. Do you have your ID in you? Because there's no, no I'm parking don't. here. Why don't you call your chief out here? Call your chief out here, because now I have a problem. You're going to sit here because right now you walk you're up to urinating. me. I'm not urinating. What's that foamy water right there? There ain't no foamy you know water what? anywhere else. That's what happens when you pee in the gravel. You, no, you All know right? what happens when you, you know what? Call your chief out here. you have your driver's here. license or anything out no, here? No, I don't. You need to call somebody What's your last name, sir? Call some, I need you to call Chief right. out here. Well, I'm gonna write you a ticket and I'll call him when I get back in my car, all right? You gonna write me a ticket? Yes, so I need your driver's license or ID card. For what? Because I need to know who I'm For writing what? a ticket to. For what? Parking, we're prohibited. Where, right. is there a sign? Okay. Yes, 
Where's the sign? Well, that one got knocked over, but there's signs okay. posted over there. There's no sign. If there's a sign, if right. I'm not allowed to stop here, then fine. Right. I don't have a Is problem moving my vehicle. But you need right. to call. And you're urinating in public. Sit here. No, I'm not. I just witnessed you urinating in public. You did not. All right, then what was that water trickling down when I drove past here? You see all this rain out here? Sweet. I don't see any rain uh, at the moment. Give me a second. I got to record this because I got this white officer out here. And he just sat here. This is so disrespectful. All right, I got my sergeant on the way. Do you have your ID? Call you what's your last name, sir? Don't worry about it. Sir, what's your Call last you name? Sergeant. This is your last chance you're going to go to jail. Do you understand For that? For what? For obstructing identification. What is your last name? I'm not obstructing anything. I'm asking your name. I'm not I have a lawful anything. reason. You have no lawful reason. I'm, I haven't done anything Come here. wrong. Come here. Sir, sir call Get your over chief here out here. Don't touch Come me. here. Come oh, here. uh-uh, don't. Come here. Don't touch me. Turn around, please. Don't touch your back. me. You're under arrest. Don't t hold it. Hands behind your back. You're under I'm arrest. A, Turn around, place your hands back. I'm a You're law under arrest. Officer. Hold hands it. Hands behind hold your tight. back. I will tase you. Hands For behind what? your back. I will tase For you. For what? Put your hands For, behind are your you back. Recording? You are under. Yes, I am. Put for your. What? Turn please around, place your hands behind your back. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant. Turn around, place your hands behind your back. Wait for your sergeant to come. Turn around. I'm gonna stand here and wait for your sergeant. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stand here and wait for your sergeant to come. Give me your hand. Be in your back and send my dog. I haven't done anything now. Wrong. Now. I'm gonna wait for now. your sergeant to come. Please don't have that dog bite me. I'm gonna wait for your On the ground now. I'm gonna wait On the ground, ground now. Take him. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant. Hands it. Take him. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant to come. I'm gonna wait for your sergeant to come. Oh, the dog is fighting me. I mean, if he's not wearing a mask, I'm not going to wear a mask. If he's not worried, I'm not worried. The president. Yes, sir. I mean, everybody's got to go somehow. You know what I mean? You mean die? Yeah, but in a way, like, I mean, I don't want to die, but I mean, if that's what God has in store for my life, then that's okay. Do you have any concerns about being at the beach with so many people with not your children? At all. Not at all. How come you're not worried at all that someone could be sick and walk by you and get you sick? Because it's there's enough wind and air that it's going to clear it all out of here. Yeah, but the wind and the air don't clear it away. Well, there's no proof of anything like that. There's wind and air everywhere in this world. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not worried about it at all. My family has the same mindset as me, and um, uh, we kind of just agreed that uh, if we get it, we get it. Um, we're going to handle it as a family and just get over it because that's what family does. When it's my time to go, it's just my time to go. I do. When it comes to coronavirus, medical experts will tell you they're very concerned about the immediate future here in Alabama. On this beach, though, your eyes and ears will tell you something much different. Just like the flu, right? Well, it's not just like the flu. It's well, I mean, far more contagious. Well, I know, but people die from the flu also. They do die from so, the flu. So, to me, that's, that's just the way I look at it. Groups are supposed to be six feet away from each other. Police work to enforce that. The groups are also ordered to only consist of people who live in the same household. There is no active effort to enforce that. I'm just here just to have fun and meet everybody and just be cool, you know. And then there is the issue of masks. We saw a grand total of zero being worn on the beach. Do you ever wear a mask? No. My wife and kids do. I don't. How come you don't? I just feel comfortable that I'm going to be okay. But the mask isn't to keep you okay, it's to keep your wife and kids okay. To protect them. I get it. I get it. Uh, the survival rate is so high. I think they're not worried about them getting sick because I they're going to live. I, I, we're all going to get sick for something eventually. I mean, if he's not wearing a mask, I'm not going to wear a mask. If he's not worried, I'm not worried. The president. Yes, sir. Some restaurants have them. But at others, where we arrived unannounced and shot cell phone video, employees were not wearing masks. The manager here telling us after our visit 
he has now given masks to his employees with instructions to wear them. At this other restaurant bar, where we also saw no employees wearing masks, the manager told us they will continue not wearing them because she wants it that way, despite it violating the state order. Traffic very heavy in Alabama's beach towns. Are you exhausted from appearing in every Republican's nightmares? Um, no, I think that's a, a very comfortable role for me. Okay. If you're full of bull****, I'm coming for you. Like, I just don't have time. I'm a single mom, the dinner's burning, I'm late to something, I have 4,000 emails, my hair is frizzy, I haven't shaved my legs in a week. No bull****. There is a billionaire named Jamie Dimon, who is head of what bank? J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan Chase, okay, and you sort of became famous because you shamed him. Mr. Diamond, you know how to spend $31 million a year in salary, and you can't figure out how to make up a $567 a month shortfall. This is a budget problem you cannot solve. I think, to be fair, Bill, I think he shamed himself. Well, you helped. I think people think that teachers love their good students best. I actually really treasure all those students who showed up unprepared, hungover, dumb, whatever they were, because they really prepared me for what it's gonna be like to question witnesses in Congress. The disparity in REO rates, do you know what an REO is? An Oreo? R, no, not an Oreo, uh, uh, an R-E-O, R-E-O. Real estate. I have to say, people always ask me, like, how do I plan for those kinds of moments? You can't plan for someone to be that dumb. I have read that every day you give your kids a coronavirus briefing. <laughs> True. On a scale of Cuomo to Trump, where do your briefings land? The information is accurate, so that would put it really far from the Trump spectrum, but it's kind of a little bit harsher than Cuomo. Okay. They're, they're not so chit-chatty. I'm not as warm and we're all in this together. I'm okay. more like, if you don't behave, you're gonna die. Some people think that Democrats can't stick to their positions, but here's my position. Dying is bad. You also uh, are known for using props. I had like a bingo board. Well, you actually, we um, uh, we brought the bingo board here. Oh, nice. These were all words actually that were used in one of the witnesses' testimony. And it's the same kind of stuff, like, you know, incentivize consumers. Well, like, how about we incentivize corporations not to cheat people? Right. Like, how about that? Um, you know, it's always unintended consequences. Um, you know, oh, says Wells Fargo. Those were just some inconsequential violations where we stole all the people's money. Um, and so these are just the same kinds of excuses that I hear. And I just wanted to call out the witness. And basically, I was going to check off every time she yeah. gave one of these. <laughs> a lot of my colleagues don't get this. And so they'll say to me, like, wow, Katie, like, you're a freshman, but you're so good at asking questions. Like, do you have any tips? <laughs> and so it's really hard to figure out how you say politely, like, well, the first tip is ask a question. If you still have a flip phone and you're a member of Congress, it's time to trade that model up. And uh, uh, some, of course, are, are speaking. You laugh so as, if, as if that's like a small caucus. I mean, the flip phone caucus has double digit membership. <laughs> and it's a bipartisan caucus, I want to add. The number one thing that I hear every day from my colleagues is, Joe, I think you need to mute your phone. I will tell you the number of people who have offered me sourdough starter um, in the last week is in the double digits. And to be clear, I, I don't have time for that. Dying is bad. You've handled a number of these cases. What do you make of this new um, release of all of these transcripts, the notes we found the week before, texts, all kinds of things that now are raising a lot of questions for people about the Flynn prosecution and the Russia investigation? Yeah, I'm sitting here trying to figure out what exactly constitutional deprivation was there? What is the crime that people think you know, Barack Obama and Joe Biden are going to be prosecuted under? To be clear, and this is using the words of President Trump and his lawyers for the last three years, any sitting president can get any classified information they want. According to Donald Trump, they can launch any investigation they want. They can tell the FBI to pursue only particular individuals. This is not me saying it. This is what Donald Trump's been saying for three years. This was their argument during the Mueller probe. This was their argument during the impeachment investigation that the president has this kind of authority. So what did we find out? That Barack Obama was aware that about intelligence intercepts on the Russian ambassador when he was talking with General Flynn, that there had just been a 
an attack on our election a couple months earlier. We were still dealing with the fallout of Russian election interference in 2016. There was a concern about a counterintelligence problem with Michael Flynn, and they had a discussion. I'm shocked. I can't believe they had that conversation. What is the crime? Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. It's been going on from before I even got elected, and it's a disgrace that it happened. What is the crime exactly that uh, you're accusing him of? You know what the crime is. The crime is very obvious to everybody. All you have to do is read the newspapers, except yours. This was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. The whole thing was corrupt.